Greetings, Shaler area. Welcome to the physics unit in eighth grade science. Uh, this is the first note video in the physics unit, so this is note video number one. Excuse the fan in the background, that's the uh, fan in the ceiling of the classroom. There's very little I can do about that rattle. So physics, remember, is the study of motion and force, and we're going to be spending the rest of the year talking about motion and what causes motion and how all of the different forces can play into that. So there are three parts in the physics unit, which means you will have a quiz at the end of each of these parts, and all of the parts are in the note packet. Part one I've titled Go, 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 because it is about actual motion. This is on chapter nine in the book, so you should make sure that you read that, uh, pages 306 to 320. It's 14 pages, and I would recommend that um, you read the sections again after you listen to the note videos because maybe there are things in the text that you will pick up on the second time around because now you'll have something to relate the information to, whereas the first time around um, it was dry and you didn't have anything to actually reference. So every section of every note packet has a certain set of essential questions and ideas that are the core ideas that you need to make sure that you have mastered. These are the things that um, are the, the main ideas, the uh, big ideas of the section. Well, in chapter nine, the big ideas are, how do we discuss motion using reference points? Because as uh, that's what this first note video is about, is reference points and how changing reference points changes our perception of motion. Uh, later note videos will discuss speed and velocity, uh, acceleration, and throughout all of them we will be spending lots of time graphing motion. Before we can get into physics though, we need to make sure that we have some understanding of math because we're going to be doing a lot of math and a lot of math that involves fractions, the F word in math, fractions. So here is a math problem. I realize these are random words, but this is actually a math problem, and this is what a lot of the, the math problems we're going to do in physics are probably going to look like to you, because they're just going to be like words on, in fractions, but you use all of your math knowledge to answer it. So take a few, uh, a few seconds or a minute here and try to figure out what this would equal. We have orange over bicycle times car over orange times human over blue times bicycle over bird times bird over car. What would this math problem equal? Well, that was 15 seconds, wasn't quite a minute, but um, let's work our way through it. Hopefully you started to get the right idea what you need to do is cancel out things that are in the numerator and the, the denominator and see what you're left with. So first, orange and orange can cross each other out, so they cease to exist in this math problem. Bicycle and bicycle can cross each other out, so they cease to exist. Car and car cease to exist, and so does bird and bird. The answer to this math problem is human divided by blue. This is what we're doing when we're converting units. This is what we're doing when we're going to be doing a, a lot of the physics-based math. Here's another one. Human times bird over four baseball times 20 baseball times bird divided by yellow. What would this one work out to be? So take a few seconds here. I'll give you about 15 seconds. Um, scratch out what scratches out and see if you can solve what would come after the equal sign. Did you scratch out baseball? And then you can actually do some, some real math with numbers. You would end up with 20 over 4. 
And in the end, you would have these units. There's one spot on this that I'd be interested to know if you picked up on. Your final answer here would be five, the number five, because that's what 20 divided by four is. Five, human stays on top, yellow stays on bottom, but we would end up with bird times bird. And we would write that as bird squared. If you understand that, and how that ends up being bird squared, then you are in a very good place to start doing a lot of the physics stuff that we do because we're gonna end up with lots of squares and cubes and you have to know what those mean to solve some of the more complex physics problems we're gonna do. This one is an example of a real physics problem that we will eventually get to. Um, so I can even give you an example of what the problem would say. So this unit here, this fraction, kilogram meter over second squared, this is what all of you have already referred to as a Newton. This is what a Newton is if you break its units down into the most simplest form. Uh, and then we would, so let's say we had, would be pushing on something with 10, with, with one Newton of force for a certain amount of seconds and this is the mass of the object that we're pushing, you could actually figure out something about that object. So if I was pushing on an object with this much force for this length of time and the object had this mass, what is it that we could solve for? Well, cross out the uh, units that cross out and you'll figure out what the question would be asking for. So kilogram would cross out kilogram. Want this second would scratch out one of these seconds and we'd still be left with a second and in the end we would have meter per second. So if you knew the mass of an object, you knew how much force you were pushing on it and you knew for how long you were applying that force, you could predict the speed that the object was moving in meters per second. So that's the kind of physics we're going to be talking about uh, as we get deeper and deeper into the notes. But if you can do the math part of the units, that is a huge obstacle that students often have to overcome when we start talking about physics. So, let's get into physics. I think we're moving, maybe not. An object in motion, or an object is in motion, if its distance changes based on a reference point. Now, it's easiest, whoops, whoops, hitting the wrong buttons here. It's easiest to determine if an object is moving if your reference point is stationary, which means it's standing still. If your reference point is moving, it's really hard to tell if something else is moving. So whenever, whenever we're doing physics, you always want to make sure that the reference point that you're using is standing still. Relative motion is what you observe based on your position. And we're going to talk about a bunch of examples here. Yeah. All of physics is based on your reference point. Two people from two different places would observe motion in very, very different ways. So let's imagine that we're in space and we have spaceship A and spaceship B. There's nothing else around us, just the black emptiness of the vacuum of space. Spaceship A happens to be moving in this direction at five meters per second and spaceship B happens to be standing perfectly still. If I was on spaceship B, if I was standing down here, I should probably use a different color. If I was standing down here, looking at spaceship A, I would see spaceship A moving five meters per second this direction, and I would wave at them as they went by. Now, if I was instead on spaceship A, looking at spaceship B, I would not see spaceship B standing still, which is what you would expect. Here is the trick to figuring all of these out. Whatever ship you are on, you don't feel like you are moving. You feel like you are sitting still. So you have to think of what you would see if you were sitting still. And if you were on spaceship A, looking down at spaceship B, if you felt like you were sitting still, it would actually appear that spaceship B was moving this direction. 
and to be moving five meters per second. Make sure you know your east and west for solving these kinds of problems. Um, east is this direction, west is this direction, north is typically up, south is down. Um, we're going to use those a lot to avoid the confusion of right and left because if I was over here looking down, my right would be this direction. If I was down here looking up, my right would be this direction, and that would just get all confusing. So we're going to use east and west for all of these. So think about that. Let that sink in. Here's a new scenario. Now both ships are actually moving. And how would that motion appear based on your reference point? Well, if you were on spaceship B, looking up at spaceship A, looking this way, Spaceship A is going to be moving this direction to the east, but it's going to appear that it's moving faster than it really is because you are on a spaceship that's moving to the west. So if I was on this ship and I felt like I was sitting still, it would actually seem like Spaceship A was moving 8 meters per second to the east because you would add your speed to it. If I was on Spaceship A, it would be the exact opposite. Spaceship B would be moving west, and it would appear that Spaceship B would be moving 8 meters per second to the west because you would add the two together. The real trick for, or the real like explanation for why it seems this way is you don't have anything else to relate the motion to. You are just in vast emptiness. The reason, if you're standing in a classroom, if you have two people in a classroom and they walk past each other, that it, it doesn't appear this way is because you have lots of things around you that are really sitting still. Um, so you know that you yourself are moving because the table is sitting still, the wall is sitting still, the phone is sitting still, the stool is sitting still. But if you're in the emptiness of space, it actually seems like you're not moving at all. All right, what about this situation? In this situation, both ships are actually moving to the east, but at different speeds. So how would the relative motion appear? Well, if you were on spaceship B, looking up at spaceship A, it would look like it was moving east, but it would look like it was moving slower than it really was. Spaceship A would eventually overtake and pass up spaceship B, so it would look like it was moving east, but it would take a while for that to happen since you're both moving at pretty close speeds. But if you were on A looking down at B, think about what you would see. You would be passing up B, but you wouldn't realize that because you would think you were sitting still. So it would actually look like spaceship B was moving to the west. This is all relative motion and it depends on your reference point. Where are you observing from? This one? is the quick check question. So uh, Friday before the booby trap, or depending on what year this video is being seen, but before our next, vo uh, before our next booby trap, uh, we will talk about this one in class. We'll see what a group thinks. All right, so are we moving? Even when you're sitting perfectly still, there is a lot of motion going on inside your body Blood is being pumped through your veins and arteries. And blood in your arteries moves at a rate of 0.7 meters per second, or we are going to be uh, doing most of our calculations in meters per second or any other speed unit, but that would be 0.33 meters per second. If you ate within the last 24 hours, uh, then you have food in your intestine, and the food moves through your intestine at a speed of 0.08 miles per hour or 0 0.036 meters per second. Now if we start to get bigger and look outside of our bodies, the United States, the continent that we are standing on or sitting on or living on, is moving across the surface of the earth because of plate tectonics. The United States is drifting west towards Japan at a rate of 2.54 centimeters per year. So even if you are sitting as still as you possibly can, you are still moving 2.54 centimeters per year to the west. Eventually, after enough years, we'll crash into Japan and then into China. 
and we'll make a huge mountain range, the same thing that happened when India and China crashed into each other and made the Himalayas. The Earth itself is spinning in an eastward direction at over 1,000 miles an hour, or 0.47 kilometers per second. So our continent is moving west, but the whole planet is spinning east. While it's spinning, it's also going around the sun. We hurtle through space on our entire planet, moving at 67,000 miles an hour, or 30 kilometers per second. So even when you're sitting perfectly still, you are still moving through space at 67,000 miles an hour. But our whole solar system is moving. We are a part of the Milky Way galaxy, and our star, the Sun, which all of our planets go around, is itself going around the whole Milky Way galaxy. We think that there's a big black hole in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy that all the stars in the galaxy go around. And our Sun, and thus our whole solar system, is moving through or around our spiral galaxy at a rate of 500 and essentially 15,000 miles per hour. It takes our solar system 225 million Earth years to go one trip around our galaxy. We call this a cosmic year. And what's interesting is that the human species on Earth has only existed for about 200,000 years. Some of our oldest ancestors that we know about go back about 6 million years, but that means the entire lineage from as far back to the most ancient ancestor that we know of, that we would kind of call human-like, um, even, wasn't even alive for a fraction of a cosmic year. Very small amount of time. Now the whole Milky Way galaxy itself is also moving through space. And it's moving at a, at a speed of what we uh, kind of estimate to be 600 kilometers per second, or over a million miles an hour. It's really difficult to figure this one out, though, because we're inside the galaxy, inside our solar system. So to try to figure out how fast the whole galaxy is moving, it's really difficult to find a reference point. And it's really difficult to find a reference point because everything in the universe is moving. So it's, if you can't find something that's sitting still that you're going to figure out your speed from, um, it, it's very, very challenging. And we assume then that the direction that we're moving is away from the middle of the universe. There's actually, there's a lot, I shouldn't say assume because there's a lot of evidence for that, that everything in the universe is essentially moving outward from a central point. Um, that's one of the pieces of evidence for the Big Bang um, that occurred many, 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 many years ago. Um, but that is about the end of our knowledge of motion. That our, we're, even if we're sitting still, our continent's moving, our planet is spinning, our planet is hurtling through space, the whole solar system is hurtling through space, and the entire galaxy is moving through space. So, you are flying. We have a 12 question booby trap on this. Um, it's going to be about some vocab. There's going to be lots of questions with the pictures of the different spaceships and uh, to see what things are, are going. So make sure that you check out the... Sorry, my recorder paused. I'm not sure what you heard and what you didn't. Uh, make sure you check, check out the link in the description and follow that to the Google form to answer the exit questions to uh, make sure you know what you're doing before the baby trap. Have a great day and welcome to physics.